Uh, I'd like to welcome you to the National Civil War Museum. Uh, we're very excited and honored to have an opportunity to be in this space with you this year. This is something that's new to our competition. And one of the interesting things about being here is if you think about uh, Governor Wolf and uh, the Pennsylvania Department of Education's mission with this contest, it's always about making the lives or making things better in Pennsylvania. You're doing that. Interestingly enough, though, if you think about uh, what we're seeing here with the National Civil War Museum, there was a great deal of invention and STEM advancement that took place around the turn of the century, around the same time that these were taking place. Uh, many inventions in uh, medicine and transportation and logistics and things of that nature. It's unfortunate it had to be around the machine of war, uh, but at the same time there were many inventions that took place during that time. Many of them here in Pennsylvania are on the battlefields of Gettysburg and other places uh, that still drive innovation in uh, our state today. So we're really excited to have you here today. In just a moment we're going to dismiss you to begin to uh, get lunches here today, and then we're excited to have the Honorable Mayor Papenfus from the, this great city of Harrisburg here to address you in a little bit and talk about uh, innovation in Harrisburg and, and things about his career path. Ladies and gentlemen, if I can have your attention, please, I guess I have the honor of being your lunchtime entertainment. It's nice to see everyone. I hope you've had a wonderful day so far in Harrisburg. Um, I understand you're going to be going back to Dixon University, which is one of our hidden gems in the city. I live right around the corner in that uh, lovely neighborhood. It's a, uh, it's a wonderful place to live. Um, Civil War Museum is here in Reservoir Park in the midst of our, our park system. Do you know we have a green belt that circles the city? And uh, it's about 20 miles long, and you can bike it and hike it, and it goes through uh, many of our different parks, and is a wonderful, wonderful asset. Um, and uh, my name is Eric Papenfus, and I am uh, the mayor of Harrisburg. So uh, we're, we're really honored that you're here. And I wanted to just take a moment to talk to you a little bit about, um, about your theme, Improving PA Through STEM, but, but specifically talking a little bit about how STEM is useful in my day-to-day -day, um, activities as mayor. And that may be a little surprising to you. You might think of a mayor is, um, I don't know what you think a mayor does, right? Uh, the police force, fire department, public works, but you don't normally think of mayor as scientist or employing the scientific method or um, dealing with uh, issues of math. But let me tell you, that's what I do on a daily basis. And it's a little surprising to me because uh, I grew up uh, wanting to be a teacher of history and languages. And I actually taught public school, believe it or not, here in Central Dauphin, and I taught Latin. Anyone taken Latin in the audience? There we go, we've got some, see, you see, that's important. Can't, uh, can't understand any of the nomenclature unless you've taken, taken Latin. And, uh, and after I taught in the public schools for a little while, I, I opened a bookstore with my wife. So I, I think I'm the only mayor that has taken the trajectory of public teacher bookseller um, all the way to higher office. It's not, it's not the usual path uh, for a mayor. But I believe that uh, governing effectively is, uh, is basically about asking questions. It's not necessarily about coming in and having all the answers. And uh, that should sound familiar. That should sound a bit like the scientific method. It should sound uh, like somebody who is interested in data and is interested in policy based on facts and science and um, is willing to innovate and experiment to, uh, to sort of reach those ultimate goals. And you'd be surprised because a couple of the things that, I, that have been the most controversial that I've had to do in Harrisburg, both have, um, ha have not been the usual, uh, the usual path. They, they've both been ones where I've been trying to say, science is behind this, and the public has said, well, we're not, we're not, really, ready for, we're not really ready for change. And uh, I've seen this, I'll give you an example. My most controversial decision, well, it's not what you think it was. It was, it was putting a bike lane down Front Street in Harrisburg and inconveniencing, inconveniencing drivers just a little bit, but doing it on the, uh, on the basis of a study of our high injury crash network, um, a traffic study which showed that the, the street could, um, could actually flow more effectively if, uh, if there was one lane less of uh, traffic. And uh, you may have even seen in the paper today uh, another controversy. I am trying to open a composting facility in the city of Harrisburg. And uh, right on the edge of the city of Harrisburg, on the border with our neighbors in Susquehanna Township. And um, I'm being inundated with all sorts of anti-scientific arguments, such as 
Compost sites uh, smell. They, they, uh, they spread pathogens. We had an elected official from Susquehanna Township stand up and say that if we were allowed to put a composting site there, it would pollute the Chesapeake Bay. Not making it up. Now, all we've got are leaves, and uh, I tried to explain that uh, it's part of the natural life cycle that uh, leaves uh, degrade and uh, can form composting, and this happens in your yard and everyone's yard, but uh, it, was, it was controversial. Nonetheless, I've used science to make those arguments and continue to use science to make those arguments. In fact, probably the, the hardest situation, not the most controversial this time, but the hardest situation that I've had to deal with since being mayor was getting woken up in the morning, one, uh, one, one morning early on, having just been elected, this was way back in 2014, and getting a call that said, there's a street in South Harrisburg that has just opened up and swallowed a car. The whole sinkhole is starting to swallow the neighborhood. And I got out of it and I raced over with the public works facility and we saw that there was this massive sinkhole that was um, going right down the middle of a highly residential street. There were about 50 homes in this uh, concentrated one block of Harrisburg. And there was a, there was a impulse that I can say uh, is, uh, is apparently the impulse that was used before because this had happened about a decade ago in Harrisburg and the previous mayor had said, fill up the hole, you know, let's just put gravel back in the hole and uh, repave the street and pretend it didn't happen. And uh, I resisted that impulse, and we hired a bunch of geophysical engineers to come and test the, uh, the underlying geography of uh, geology of the, of the area where the sinkhole was. And they did everything from core borings to um, a very uh, sort of technical seismographic thing where they, where they sort of took small hammers and hammered at various places in the road and they did um, uh, geophysical mapping and basically it was determined that the underlying limestone ge uh, geology was, uh, was very much prone to sinkholes and in fact there were three fault lines converging under this street right in the heart of residential Harrisburg. And um, this was a significant problem because it meant that if we just covered it up, it was going to come right back. It was not safe. It was a public uh, safety issue. And it was going to cost millions of dollars. And the city didn't have millions of dollars. I can tell you that. We were broke. But I, I took those engineering reports. And you know what we did? We, we decided to have a sinkhole summit in Harrisburg. And we invited scientists and policymakers from DC to come to Harrisburg and learn about sinkholes. Because at that time, sinkholes were not covered by any type of federal disaster mitigation relief. It was basically, they were used to dealing with floods, tornadoes, fires, sinkholes, no. Especially since sinkholes tend to come sometime after the event. You might have a torrential downpour, water tends to exacerbate sinkholes, and, and basically uh, months later, after you've cleaned everything up, suddenly a sinkhole opens. And that's not how FEMA generally worked. Well. We had the scientists present, we talked about uh, the karst geology, we did all sorts of amazing things, and believe it or not, we got the federal government to allow sinkholes to be covered uh, for the first time in the nation's history under federal disaster mitigation relief, and we got grants for about $6 million in Harrisburg to be able to buy up each of those homes and uh, um, uh, demolish them, tear them down, and create an open green space that can never be built upon because you can't fix the underlying uh, geology, but what you can do is mitigate it uh, through uh, proper drainage, and now it's gonna be an open space park in the city of Harrisburg. And the point with that is science won in the end. It was able to create good policy, and in this case, we got great federal policy because we focused on the geology. And it's my hope that eventually that argument's going to win with composting, because I think we all know as well that composting doesn't spread pathogens, isn't dangerous, is a, um, is a good thing for the environment, not a bad thing. Let's talk a little bit about technology. So that's the science part of STEM. Technology is amazing because right now uh, a phrase called smart cities is really all the rage in, uh, in governing circles. You go to a conference of mayors uh, or a, you know, a municipal league conference and everybody wants to talk about smart cities. And it's basically this concept of new technology um, uh, working to help make things more efficient. And we've been on the cutting edge of this. One of the first things I did as mayor was we replaced uh, all of our street lights in the city of Harrisburg with new LED lights. That was a, uh, a great savings, both financially and uh, a benefit for the environment when we did that. But when we did it, we put in new technology, smart city technology, 
from a company in Cambridge, UK, which basically, uh, it's called Telenza, which basically allows each of our streetlights in the city of Harrisburg to speak to each other and gather information. And they can do some really interesting stuff. For instance, we can, believe it or not, um, count traffic. So we can, do, uh, we can know exactly how many cars are passing underneath the streetlight or going down this road or that road. Think about the implications for that uh, in terms of um, uh, routing uh, traffic or making things uh, or doing uh, traffic studies that will make things more efficient. Uh, we can measure air quality in the city of Harrisburg, which is a big deal. People who have allergies definitely um, uh, find that it's, it's hard in central Pennsylvania, but we have these sensors available. They're pretty neat. We can do other things. We can actually, through a street light, uh, uh, create a sensor which tells us um, when a, uh, an open dumpster is full or when the level of the river is at a certain point or a creek is at a certain point that it might uh, flood. Or think about this. Uh, the, some of the sensor technology can allow us to adjust the lighting, right? So if it's measuring traffic and then there's no traffic, it's three in the morning and there's nobody going down, they can, they can take the wattage or the brightness down of the light until a car comes, comes within, uh, within, within view of the sensor. That's, that's pretty neat stuff. It can save money, it can do lots of interesting things. It can even measure the temperature of the streets and roads so that you know how much salt you need to put out or when it's time to deploy your salt. Uh, this is all the type of technology, and it's actually being pioneered right here in Harrisburg. You can read a little bit about it uh, online if you, if you look up Talenza, the company. Another thing that we're doing in Harrisburg, and it's similar technology, is that we've pioneered the possibility of using autonomous vehicles in Harrisburg. We've actually gone through um, our, uh, our traffic signal cabinets, especially around the Capitol complex, and we've replaced them with basically radio. It's, it's a radio transmitter technology, but it essentially... Um, guides a car without, uh, without having to, um, you know, have any uh, hands on the wheel. I was one of the first people to get to drive a car all around Harrisburg, which was um, uh, autonomous and self-operating. Uh, self um, believe it or not, you can do all these things with smart city technology these days. And when I took office, our traffic signal cabinets, they have little computers in them. And do you know that those computers were running Windows 95? And they had these things called floppy disks. Anyone know what a floppy disk is? Yes, it's true. So that if you actually want it, like let's just say the computer went down, you had to go get a, you had to actually bring a disk and fix the thing. So, so far from being smart technology, it was amazing. But you know, that was only a decade or two ago and it required uh, capital uh, infrastructure to rebuild. And we've been very successful. The Talenza project that I'm talking about that also works with um, autonomous vehicles, that, that is all free of charge to the city because we've been allowing them to test it, to pilot it in Harrisburg, and then they hope to, of course, sell it to cities throughout the country, but that's been, that's been a great thing. Another thing we've done along those lines is we've, we've, um, we've just equipped all of our, our ambulances and fire trucks with uh, signal interceptor technology, right? So it's imagine you're going to a fire, there's a red light, well, the, um, it's GPS technology there, but it basically the fire truck sends a signal and the light can turn green, which is pretty neat, and the side streets can turn, can, can turn red. This is all smart cities technology. Don't let anyone think that you're not involved in technology if you're in politics or if you're a mayor. Engineering. Let's talk about engineering for a second uh, because I feel like I, I practically, my right-hand man is the city engineer. He is uh, you know, constantly doing things and we've had, we've had issues in Harrisburg. For instance, we had a whole series of fatalities right out here on State Street just uh, in front of the museum. Now, I don't know if you, you probably did drive up State Street um, uh, to, to get here and you turned uh, right into Reservoir Drive. I'm, I'm guessing that's how you came. But you noticed it was this giant boulevard of a street, right? You've got uh, parking lanes, you've got two travel lanes, you've got a central turn lane, um, and uh, you'll notice there are residences on either side, but it's an extremely, extremely wide street. Well, um, we have, unfortunately, we had five fatalities on that street in less than a year. People riding their bikes to work or um, uh, uh, just trying to cross the street to get some, some groceries. But it's so wide that it is very dangerous and cars go very, very fast. So we've tried to engineer a solution to that, which, uh, which will be the first of its kind uh, in Pennsylvania, which is basically to establish a road diet which will allow to, which will basically allow us to move the parking lanes into the street 
um, and basically have a sheltered bike lane on either side, have fewer lanes of travel, better crosswalks, better lighting, uh, and better pedestrian refuge areas within the, within, within the street. And we're doing all that um, under, a, under a rubric called Vision Zero. Also on engineering, uh, we spent a lot of time upgrading all of our parks and playgrounds to deal with stormwater management in the city of Harrisburg. And if you look at a lot of the construction projects around town, you'll see, oh, they're doing these big plantings and, and bump outs and curbing and all this different thing with, uh, with green infrastructure. And that's, that's huge because we, um, we do need to filter our stormwater. We do need to protect what goes in directly to the Chesapeake uh, Bay through the Susquehanna River. And that's a lot of our focus. And then finally, math. I'm wrapping up here, but math for STEM. I use math all the time. And uh, it's not just budgeting. It's not just the, the normal, you know, trying to figure out how to make things, uh, make things work. But I'm a big believer that, believe it or not, you know, math, math is the great equalizer in politics. It's one of those things that I think can help our politics from not getting too extreme on one side. You might have you know, one side saying you just want to, um, you know, cut, cut, cut taxes and, uh, and then deal with the aftermath. And you might have another side of the aisle saying, oh, they just want to raise, uh, raise wages and, and, uh, and, and sort of deal with the aftermath. And math, by focusing on math, by focusing on making sure that every decision you make is fiscally responsible, meaning that, uh, you know, the money that's coming in equals the money that's going out and that you're, uh, you're properly shepherding tax dollars, that, can, that, can, that argument can design proper policy which helps a city recover. And the city of Harrisburg basically went from the brink of bankruptcy to a city which, um, which, is, which is thriving and growing and developing. We've got almost a billion dollars worth of projects in the city of Harrisburg, and they are all in the STEM fields. We have a university, Harrisburg University, which is building a new office tower um, inspired to grow because there's so much uh, possibility, uh, which, which I see in all of your eyes in this room, that they want to have more students. They've already gone from, in the past uh, five years, Harrisburg University went from five graduate students in the STEM fields to almost 5,000 graduate students in the STEM fields from all over. They're building a $100 million plus office tower. And if you look at the businesses that are growing in the city of Harrisburg, it's technology businesses, it's uh, businesses like Webpage FX, which uh, you know has 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 hired over uh, almost 150 young people to work in um, designing web pages for companies all over, and it's younger people that are moving in, helping the city grow its population, and really representing the future for for Harrisburg. So, I I grew up thinking that you know history and um, uh, languages and all this. I was going to learn from the past and, and apply that to, to policy, but it's really, it's really STEM. It's focusing on innovation in the present for building a stronger future that has really defined uh, everything that I, I'm doing now and is, is, uh, is truly, truly invaluable. So with that little uh, discussion, I don't have time for questions now, but I will be sticking around. I think we, uh, we need to present some awards and some medals, and uh, I would like to stick around and help you with that. So thank you all very much. Thank you again, Mayor right Pappenfus. So, yeah, you, you, you nailed it. You, you used your mathematical skills and timing. Excellent. Um, one of the things that I would want for you to know from my standpoint and thinking about uh, knowing Mayor Papenfus, uh mainly through the newspaper, uh, but knowing Mayor Papenfus as a resident in this area, uh, dovetailing that back to um, Secretary Stem this morning, some of the dignitaries or other individuals that you'll meet later today, our, our very dedicated team that's over here that's helping you through today, your coaches, your advisors, that um, we're, we're so excited that you, as Pennsylvania residents, are here today. So I think it's important for you to get to know these individuals a little bit because we believe in you. And we want that to be one of the cornerstones that we know that regardless of what happens over the uh, next few days, we want you to know that what you're doing is incredibly important. I need you to know that. Can, oh, I, yeah. can I also say, and we're hiring. We're hiring at the city. So, and I mean, I mean it very seriously. So, um, uh, uh, all of the fields that you are studying are are the future for our cities and for our state, and uh, that's what that's about. There, there's there's so many opportunities right now. 
So for those of you who have resumes with you today, you can submit those to Mayor Patton Bruce. And I would call your attention, IU10, wherever they are, our uh, state college team, they're working on some compost things. So that might oh, be of uh, immediate help, help for you. I need your help. Uh, but, uh, but honestly, we do believe in you. We're excited that you are the future. I need you to know that my knees are getting worse. My vision's getting worse. I'm driving slower. So I really need you to come up with some great inventions because I'm convinced that I want to live forever. Uh, but more importantly, I have children, children that are younger than you. And I'm excited about the fact that you are going to make Pennsylvania a better place. You are making Pennsylvania a better place. And it's incredibly exciting for me. We have the first of our recognition activities here during the competition. Mayor Papafus is going to stay here to help us uh, uh, do that. We're also going to ask Mr. Judd Pittman to come up. Uh, Judd Pittman is a patent, a Pennsylvania Training and Technical Assistance Consultant. But right now, he's been, spent the last two, two and a half years of his life, three years, sorry, uh, uh, on special assignment to the Department of Education. So what Judd is doing, among many things, is going out and visiting school districts, visiting IUs, visiting uh, STEM cooperatives, things of that nature, and thinking about how to map a course forward in computer science, STEM innovation, STEM incubators, uh, the supporting things like this, like the STEM competition that are so important to the fabric of our economy, our education, and our society. So I'm really happy to have Judd with us here today. Thank you, Judd, for being here. I know you're awful you, busy. Uh, but he is going to help us uh, administer some of the uh, uh, um, awards this afternoon. The STEM program, at least at our school, uh, is an extracurricular activity where we try to uh, come up with ideas to solve problems that can benefit Pennsylvanians. So that's sort of the, the premise behind the Governor's STEM competition, which we entered into this year. And uh, we made it to the state level here in Harrisburg, and we're really excited about it. I really enjoyed the process of working with the team, working as a group, and establishing a final product that we're all very proud of and we're really happy and excited to get to this level. It's a pretty great feeling for us because our team has been together for three years doing STEM and so this is our last year, this is our senior year, so we finally got our run at it and we're really excited to present our project which is a digital work zone.